Hello, everybody. Everybody can hear me? Well, I'm talking about cinema and society. Uh, we are a nation of movie buffs, so this is very relevant to think and analyze how cinema influences society and how society influences cinema. You see, art, I mean, let me start by stating the obvious that art should entertain. But there is a difference between art and circus. Circus only entertains. Art has many more things to do. And particularly cinema, because cinema is a kind of a synthesis of so many arts. It has literature, it has visual, it has music, it has acting, it has dancing, it has uh, every form of art somehow or the other contributes in cinema. But does it reflect society? Does it reflect the aspirations and hopes and dreams of society? Their apprehensions and hurts and bruises? I believe that even mainstream cinema, which has no claim over reality, does that. One can ask that if the film is, films are not realistic, how can they portray, how can they reflect truth of the society. You know, commercial cinema has its own language, like dreams have. You know, when we sleep, all the parts of our body are functioning, except for brain. Brain functions in a different manner, because if it keeps on functioning the way it functions, when we are awake, how will we sleep? So it has a trick. It changes the language. And instead of thinking sharp focus, it starts working in dreams. Now, dreams don't come from Mars and Moon. They come from the realities. But they turn into symbols. And if you tell your dream to any psychoanalyst, he or she will be able to analyze and tell you why you are seeing this dream and why you have seen this dream. The same way, cinema, if you look at it carefully, as a matter of fact, in the light of the list of the heroes, or the list of the villains, or the list of the heroines, the characters, I'm not talking of actors, you can write the socio-economic political history of this country of last 70 years, and more, as a matter of fact. If you remember in 40s, who was the hero? Devdas. Devdas was the symbol, the personification of that feudal system that was breathing its last, where even a lover, even a rebel, could not think to rebel against the parents, against the establishment. So that anger was directed towards the self. And there was a glorification in that society for self-destruction. Then the world changed. And came the time when we got independence, and we were hopeful, and we were happy, and we thought everything is going to be fine and right, and the happiness is just around the corner and wonderful days are on the next page of the calendar. And then we had a rebel star. Now, the rebel star that we saw later, the rebel image that we saw later, you say in 70s, this rebel star was different. This rebel star had no problem with the society, with the economic or social system, because this rebel star was hopeful. The only fight he had was with the feudalistic system of his or her own family. So this star, for the first time, unlike Devdas, started telling the parents, the mother or the father or the grandfather, that I will marry so-and-so and I won't marry so-and-so. That was the rebellion. But then, in a while, the dream shattered, the society realized, people realized, the younger generation realized that things are not that hunky-dory, happy days are not here, and so on and so forth. And this disillusionment, which ultimately came towards the 70s, created the angry young man. This was for the first time a vigilante, a man who had lost, because the society had lost, trust in the institutions. That was the time when extra constitutional forces were rising. That was the time when the court's decisions were being uh, rejected and so on and so forth. And that was the time that you saw on the screen 
an angry young man has come. But how long you can remain angry? So ultimately you get tired of anger and comes the cynicism. Then you see that the villain who was once upon a time, the villain was the Thakur, the Zamindar, when we had that remnants of a feudal system. Then with urbanization, the villain became the uh, capitalist, the mill owner, because that was the time of uh, uh, socialistic pattern of society. And then you see that the villain as urbanization became denser and denser. The villain was the slum lord or the urban gangster. And lo and behold, within few years, this gangster, this urban gangster became the hero. That tells something about the morality for society. And then after that, the villain was the policeman, the politician, which was unimaginable in 40s or 50s, because we used to respect the politicians, uh, leaders. But in 80s, the villain was the politician, the policeman. And in 90s, for very obvious reasons, the villain became the Pakistani terrorist. And then we got tired of him also. The law of diminishing utility was applied on him. <laughs> and at the moment, we don't have any villain. Because today the villain of the society has such tremendous resemblance with us that we don't want to face him. We don't want to expose him. As a matter of fact, we want to be him. So how can we call him a villain? That's why we are devoid of villains at the moment. Look at the women characters. Main Chuprahungi was a film and Meena Kumari and Mala Sinas of the world who would cry at the drop of the hat. Their husbands will go on the quota to listen to Mudra and they will sit in the temple and sing bhajans for, uh, a long, for the long life of the husbands and so on and so forth. Now she is rejected. She is gone. The society is aware that she is no longer a currency. So she is not on the screen also. You see, it is not a one-way traffic. It is give and take. What happens is that there are some, they think but can't articulate. They fantasize but they can't visualize. They imagine, desire but can't name. The cinema somehow instinctively understands what they are looking for. And when the guess is right, when the filmmakers or the writers guess is right, the film offers an icon. The film offers a symbol, the film offers a narrative, a character, and the audience says, this is what we were looking for. And as the, but this, obviously the change is constant, that's why the hero, heroine, everybody changes. You see, you, we used to have Mona Darling, we used to have Rita, we used to have Julie, where have they gone? They are no longer in the film anymore. Because the heroine used to be the Pati Varta. Sati Savitri, that time, somewhere we needed somebody like Rita and Miss Mona also. But then, our heroine became Miss Mona. <laughs> and the society accepted that. So now we don't, we don't need those vamps. And it is, all of it is happening in the society. And cinema is real only reflecting it. Then cinema gives you the image, then you take that image and send a stronger message to society, cinema, and so on and so forth. In, there is a major change. When I joined film industry, I was 19 year old, I had joined after my graduation. And when I started writing and showed some producer, they said, son, you are talented, you will become a writer, but let me give you an advice. Write a story which will be popular in small towns because that is where the money is. There are very few big cities and the rental, theater rental is so high that we don't get much money from the big cities. The film should run in the small towns. After 45 years, this mantra is standing on its head. Now they say that, I mean, I'm repeating the words of the producer, young producer, I won't name him. That I don't care if my film doesn't get released in UP and Bihar. 
as long as it is doing well in multiplexes of big cities and diaspora likes it, I am home safe and dry. Now this person is not a sociologist. This person is not an economist. But this person unwittingly, unknowingly making a statement that almost 75% human beings, Indians, are redundant. And understandably so. Because you had hospital for rich people, hospital for poor people. Hotel for rich people, hotel for poor people. School for rich people, school for poor people. Now you have theatres for rich people and theatres for rich people. These multiplexes have offered us a package deal. Something is very good about it, something is not so good. Good that we are allowed to have all kinds of films and they become viable. Bad because the audience that comes to multiplexes is not interested in social economic problems of the country. It has happened for the first time, you'll notice, that the protagonist of Hindi cinema is no longer a working person or a poor person. He doesn't come from working class. In 40, 50, 60, 70, you may not agree with the intellectual level of those films. But who is the hero? A rickshawala, a taxi driver, a farmer, a mill worker, a clerk, a school teacher, a lawyer, a doctor. Now our protagonist doesn't work. <laughs> he lives in a palatial house, and when he steps out, he's in Switzerland. Because if he'll walk on the streets of India, some poor person may come in the frame <laughs> and spoil the party. So what has happened that on one hand, we are achieving variety. On the other hand, at the cost of certain realities. Society is economically divided. I mean, 75 people don't mean there are 25 people that are important. And obviously, because that those 75 people will buy in a single theater, buy a ticket in 10 rupees or 50 rupees. This man will buy a ticket in 500 rupees. So he is worth 10 of them. Here I have to please one. There I have to please 10 people. So this is a better deal. And then I'll be talking about them, and I'll be writing about them, and I'll be filming about them, whom I know well, who are my society, who are my people. So we are gaining sophistication, we are gaining smartness, fairness, at the cost of honesty and depth. And it is coming from the audience. I genuinely believe that audience is a pretty bad influence on cinema. They generally accuse cinema. Why won't they? They would make Dobi Gazameen. They will love to do that. They will make Mother India, Sujata, Bandini. Why won't they do it? They had done it earlier. When they had done it? When the middle class was educated and sophisticated. You see, when Again, life offers you packages. And here in every package, you have something good and something bad. Because there was hardly any industrialization. So how could you be in middle class? Only people who are lawyers, university professors, college teachers, um, doctors, civil servants. These are the people who were middle class people. So they were necessarily educated. But industrialization, when industrialization happens, it creates lots of ancillaries. These ancillaries are, suppose somebody is making a bicycle. So he'll say, OK, you make this tube. This main factory doesn't produce everything. They give a small contract to different people, smaller people. Now, these people are technicians. These people have learned the job, but they may not be necessarily educated. So industrialization creates a middle class which is not necessarily educated. It happened in the 80s. Almost 15 crore people entered middle class bracket for the first time. I don't know whether 
it is right to say politically correct or not, but it is the truth that it takes three generations to lose culture. When you lose everything, then too you, are rem you remain with your culture and it takes three generations that it goes out of you. It takes three generations to gain culture. That's the last thing to come and last thing to go. Things are changing, that's why. Now the next generation has grown up. And the next generation, you can see the difference. Eight years was the time when for the first time 18 crore people came into uh, middle class bracket. Now you can see, communalism was not invented by 80s. It was all, always there. But it was never as ugly or anesthetic as it was in 80s. And cinema always had made good and bad films, but these were the dark ages of cinema. Sarkaile Khatiya Jala Lage, the songs and the speeches of Mr. L.K. Dwani come from the same package. You could not imagine that a man like him would be the top leader of the country in 40s, 50s, not possible. And you could not imagine Sarkaile Khatiya Jala Lage could be a super hit song in 50s. It's the same thing, but things are changing and I'm hopeful because gradually I can see that the party, I mean the first generation celebrated the party, they didn't want to hear anything about Kala Handi and so on, who is starving, let them, we are eating. But the next generation and the next generation that is coming is more sensitive, more receptive, the antennas at the right place. Now we can see that we have crossed kuch kuch hota hai kal ho na ho pyar ho gaya so on now the films are achieving certain depth certain sensitivity and i am extremely hopeful and i am extremely proud of this younger generation which has come now and things will become better and better because for them, it is no achievement that they have all the material things around them and they have the facility. For their parents or grandparents, it was an achievement. Maybe it was an achievement for me, but not for my children. They take it for granted. And now they are looking around. They are the people with much better values, much better aesthetics, much better morality than my generation. And that is why I believe that Indian mainstream Cinema's future is very bright. Society will see good films and will ask for better films. Thank you.